In 30 minutes, broadcasting's finest duo will hit the airwaves. And prepare for the incomparable Opie and Anthony show. Only a show this big could have a pre-show this good. Welcome to the Opie and Anthony pre-show. With Sam Roberts. And welcome. Good morning. It's the Opie and Anthony pre-show, and we are live here on the Opie and Anthony channel. Call up now, 866-WOW-ON-WOW. That's 866-969-1969. And start your mornings with us here on the Opie and Anthony pre-show. Packed this little studio full of people to make sure we could put on a show for you. Call up 866-WOW-ON-WOW and talk about... Some of the things you might be excited about Opie and Anthony getting to today. Some of the things that went down yesterday. Stuff that's happened overnight. You know, following along with Opie and Anthony on Twitter. That's your best hint as to what may come up today. Is looking at those Twitter accounts and realizing what's going to happen. That's where we get our information. That's, that's a valuable tool as a producer prepping for another Opie and Anthony show. And I'm going to tell you this. I know I always talk about how excited I am. And I'm an excited person. I'm very excitable. It doesn't take much. But it is a new day here on the Opie and Anthony show. 28 minutes until the show begins. The guys have not arrived yet. They're on their way. Everybody will be here. And I'm going to tell you this. This is a whole new day. And not just the way every day is a whole new day because it's not yesterday. I mean, things are different. The mood has changed. Because in that studio, we broadcast here from the side studio, the tiny little studio that's usually just used pretty much as a phone screening room while the main show is on. Because the main studio is to be christened every morning by the Opie and Anthony show right before we go on the air We smash a bottle of champagne and let everyone know it's time for another day of broadcasting. It's a new day because as I look through the glass and I peer into this main studio, into the Opie and Anthony studio, I see there's been a change in the studio. Yes, one change has been made. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but one change has been made in studio And the guys have been talking about this. I mean, they brought it up yesterday. But Opie and Anthony and Jim have been talking about changes in the studio for months, if not years at this point. And nothing gets done. At one point, there were piles of keyboards that weren't attached to anything. And they disappeared. Then they reappeared. Yes, the keyboards did eventually. They said, we at least got to get this equipment out of the room. The equipment did disappear, but then one day they just popped back up on the desk. It was a very strange thing. But I'm telling you, there's been there's a permanent change that has happened inside the studio. So that's something to look forward to today on the Opie and Anthony show. And I don't know, quite frankly, how Opie and Anthony are going to react. Because Opie and Anthony are like bad kids that are used to being punished. Okay, they're not used to uh, positive reinforcement. They're used to getting negative reactions for everything. So when they come in this morning and they see that somebody has done something uh, uh, that they've asked for and almost to say, you know what, you're a valuable part of this company, very valuable. We want to make sure you're happy. So we did what you asked. That never happens. So it'll be weird to say to see uh, 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 exactly how Opie and Anthony react. I think they'll probably try to find some flaw. That's what, that's what I think. They tend to do that because that's what's comfortable. But we'll see. We'll see. Let's go to the phones, 866-WOW-1-WOW. And we start the morning with Peter in Long Island. Peter, welcome to the pre-show. Morning, Sam. Good morning. Listen, uh, you're coming off a little bit Tony Schiavone-ish with your hype. That's good. That's a compliment. Tony Schiavone was a pro wrestling announcer that had quite a career for himself. Yeah, but he also sounded a little desperate going. 
Uh, we're going to have the third fight of the century, the Ultimate Warrior versus Rufus. It, it just <laughs> you mean when, to- down a little bit. <laughs> when Tony Schiavone was hyping up, you kind of saw through that maybe he was just filling time? Yeah. <laughs> he was definitely paying a couple of rent checks, you know? Thank you, Peter. You're a smart man. The- uh, George in Nova Scotia. Uh, I just need to know if it's cold out this morning, Sam. Cold as shit is the weather report for this morning. Here on the East Coast, it's cold as balls. Thank you, Sam. You got it. Uh, I don't see your name. Who's on line two? Line two is is this me? Yeah, Danny from North Carolina. Oh, yeah, Danny. Hey, Sam, uh, when these idiots ask you what time it is, you say it's prime time with Sam Roberts at 6.05 or something like that. That's a great idea. Something catchy, and something you could put also, on a T-shirt. Real quick, um, when when it, when everybody when people lose their teeth and they only have one tooth left, it's going to be a canine. It's not a molar. Those wear out first. <laughs> so the canines are the ones in the back of your mouth, right? No, the canines are the pointy ones uh, in the front there. Oh, I, like a dog's teeth. That's why they call them yeah, canines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. They have the least contact with anything else. Of course they're going to wear out last. I guess that's true. Cause you're bi- oh, because you're biting with the back teeth, so they're going to yeah. rot away. And then the front teeth are the ones that are going to get punched out or something. So they can't... Okay. Yeah. I see it. Thanks, buddy. All right. Professional broadcaster, Sam Roberts. Hell yeah. I like that. I like that people call the hype show to hype the guy hosting the hype show. Uh, yesterday we were talking about the reason that came up for those that don't know and think that for some reason a caller is now just calling up and talking about weird dentures. Uh, we were talking about George Washington's teeth yesterday. I have no idea how it came up, but uh, I, he had dentures. And I guess he had one real tooth in his mouth. And we were talking about how strange it is that the president uh, would, be, would have that. I mean, George Washington is a revered man. And you have fake teeth and one real tooth. You look like Rich Voss. Andrew in New Jersey. Hey, what's up, Sam? How are you doing? Uh, I want to go back to uh, when Colin Quinn called into the show yesterday, mm-hmm. questioning the guy's uh, interview skills. Well, first of all, I can listen to just four hours of them talking to each other, which would be fine. But if you're going to interview people, you've got to go all in. And you guys don't have a staff. When you have five to ten people a week coming in there, you can't expect to, the guys to read five to ten books and go out to all the premieres. So I think the problem is you don't have anybody to, to help, to be honest with you. You let them in, probably has a hundred people working for them. Yeah, that's true. But, I mean, you know, other radio shows do it. Yeah, they have staff, too, though. Yeah. The guy down the hall has, like, uh, 50 people working for that's him. That's true. He does. He's got, yeah, he's got a TV staff working for him. You're right. Yeah, Thank- I wanna, yeah go ahead. I want to call you out a little bit. You and Jimmy were kind of skirting around the issue, saying that maybe the other two guys are in being prepared for the interviews. Well, what yeah, do I mean, I don't think I don't think Ope or Anthony make any secret about the fact they almost take pride in not prepping. You know what I mean? I mean, the show is an off the cuff show. But right. what happens is when you invite and, and and by the way, that's what makes the show so brilliant. Uh, nobody can nobody nobody really gets. I don't think how difficult it is to pull a show like this off. Off the cuff. I mean, if it were something that were prepared for like crazy, it would make Opie and Anthony's lives, quite frankly, easier. But they're at comfortable in the environment where they're off the cuff. So that's fine. But at the same time, a lot of the big actors that come in are not really off the cuff people. So they, 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 they can't hang in a conversation. So you kind of have to know, all right, what direction should I take this in? But you guys respect Ronnie B. When he does uh, an amass, which is only you know once every two weeks or whatever, he watches everything that the guy does. I mean, right. he goes in there and he's ready. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. They're, they're, it's it's a different school of thought, and that's what I think. That's what Opie and Anthony were getting at yesterday. Thank you, Andrew. Let's actually so we get everybody on board. Let's play the clip of what happened. Colin Quinn has become the the truth police of the Opie and Anthony show. Um, he called in. He calls in when he thinks something wasn't done well, and he just. I think he, he's just taking pride in the fact that he can get into Opie and Anthony's heads. But two days ago, of course, we had Barkhad who played the pirate, the main Somali pirate in Captain Phillips. We had him on the show, and look, he wasn't. He's not a professional actor. He's a he's a limo driver that ended up getting an amazing role in Captain Phillips. And he, he wasn't the most compelling guest. 
and Opie and Anthony and Jim had some trouble with him. Colin Quinn called up yesterday and made no secret about the fact that he was listening. Let's let's hear Colin Quinn. Let me just say, yeah. you really outdid yourselves with the Barkhad Abdi <laughs> interview yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> just, but we immediately, <laughs> that one was going so bad, and we're all looking at each other in the room like, oh, and, uh, and all I'm thinking do. is somewhere Colin is listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I think of now. <laughs> Solemnity yeah. and the fucking ceremony which you guys give to the, and the gravity. And then you met Tom Hanks. <laughs> you guys are, you're worse than inside the fucking actor's studio. You understand? Um, what was that like? Were you shaking? He's like, well, I don't know, guys. Even now I'm a Somali refugee. You know, let's it's still, you know. It's not 1950. I'm fucking Claude Gable either. You know, that was Colin Quinn basically saying they did. I, I don't know what constructive that does. He could probably have just texted them off the air and said, hey, guys, you know, you could use a little work with Bobo as if he's like their radio coach. You know what I mean? It's so funny because Opie and Anthony won't take shit from management ever. But Colin Quinn calls up and he can get in their heads. Listen to this is Anthony kind of coming to terms with the fact that Colin. I think Colin Quinn's phone call really shook up Ant. Let's uh, let's take a listen to Ant's reaction. Could you imagine? Okay, could you imagine Christian Bale walks in the studio and sits down? How awful we would be. We'd just be like, oh, so then, ah, I was. I wanted to say, like, you can't bring. It's so hard to bring some guests into right. the show. So you have to ask them questions, and you can't ask them questions while you're going, <laughs> you know, being goofy. But it's not me. I know it's not me. A lot of times these guests come in. I'm not acting like me. Who gives a shit? Colin is laughing. I sit there at my house when friends come over and sit down and go, but, so, Joe, uh, Joe Curry, tell me about <laughs> when uh, you were growing up. and st No, you stop. I Colin, can't Colin, help it. Colin is laughing somewhere Colin right has now. fucking gotten in my head now. <laughs> He's laughing. Well, there's nothing else in there. Why would they have plenty of room? <laughs> uh, and he was. Colin was deep inside, especially Anthony's head yesterday. I mean, the guest thing is weird because, like I said, the Opie and Anthony show prides itself on being an off-the-cuff show that is just kind of, I mean, at, outrageous at times, but just a show that talks about whatever, whatever's in the room. Let's comment on it. Let's not leave it sitting there. So when a guest comes in, the mindset of Opie and Anthony, and I think Jim, too, is ideally we'd like you to just come in and join the show. That's why comedians work so well on the show, because comedians would just come in and be able to shoot the shit. But actors have a tougher time with that, so it's finding the medium between uh, just doing a full-out schlocky, so what inspired you to, to be a part of this, and getting the actors to, and, and musicians and people like that to feel comfortable enough to just hang out on the show. And there have been people like like uh, Stifler, Sean William Scott, like people like that, Ricky Gervais, guys like that come in, and they completely become a part of the show. And when that happens, they have better appearances on the Opie and Anthony show than they will on any other radio or TV show. Because that's kind of the magic of the show. It's just most actors can't get into that groove because they think that this is just another stop on their promotional tour and don't realize how special... The Opie and Anthony show really is. You're going to realize how special it is in just about 16 minutes when the Opie and Anthony show goes live for the very first time this Thursday. Red in Canada. Hey there, Sam. Uh, I'm not normally up to catch the show this early in the morning. I got to say, your voice, holy man, it's worse than a fucking alarm clock. Yeah, I mean, it's not I'd something. To a dog I, scratching his asshole on the carpet. Uh, yeah, I would imagine it's not something that people are going to sleep through. I'm not. But I'm not here to. Uh, I'm not here to calm you. Okay, I'm not here to give you something that's easy and nice. I'm not here to make your morning calm, cool, and collective. I'm here to alert you to the fact that there's about to be four hours of the best goddamn entertainment that you'll find anywhere on the radio. And if you need to hear that through. Cat claws scratching on a wall. You have to, because you need to be up and out of bed and ready for this shit. Red hung up. Psycho Bob in Baltimore. Hey, good morning, Sam. How you doing, buddy? You, o and A are kind of like offensive linemen in pro football. When you don't hear their name called, it means they did a good job. And that these guys are so good at what they do 
They make it look effortless. They make it look easy, and it is really difficult what they do. Yeah, and that's also that's the kind of the curse of being Opie and Anthony is that, uh, like you said, people don't really recognize how good they are at doing what they do because, like you said, they make it seem like, oh, we just kind of roll in here and shoot the shit. I mean, okay. but anybody else, anybody else rolling in here and shooting the shit, nobody would pay to hear them do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm punching up. All right, I'll talk to you later, Psycho Bob. Talking about football players, as Psycho Bob just did, uh, Richard Sherman is back in the news, and I'm sure Opie and Anthony are going to touch on this. He went out uh, on a press conference yesterday, and you know he's the guy who plays for the Seahawks that we talked about on Tuesday, and everybody was talking about him over the weekend, who after the game went on and was talking about how he's the best and was talking about uh, how the opponent, the guy on the other team, uh, Crabtree, how he was a lousy player. And so he went on TV and he did this wrestling promo and he got everywhere. And I guess people have been calling him a thug. And so yesterday, uh, Richard Sherman went on TV and said he was disappointed at the fact that people were calling him a thug and that he thinks thug is just an acceptable way of of saying the N-word. And so he's basically saying that everybody in the media is referring to him as an N-word, but using the word thug instead. Obviously, Opie and Anthony are going to touch on that today. Look, the guy brought up the hockey fight. He said, remember we were talking on Tuesday Obi tweeted the video of the hockey fight. We never got to it on the main show, but we talked about it on the pre-show. Um, Obi tweeted that video of the two teams that 30 seconds into the game, just everybody that was skating, everybody that was on the ice ended up fighting with each other. And he cited that and said, nobody's calling them thugs, which is, which is true. But I got an email about that. When I was talking about the hockey fight and saying Opie and Anthony might talk about it, blah, 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 and kind of describing what happened, I got an email from the host of Hockey This Morning on NHL Radio here on Sirius XM, which, by the way, I, if, you're, if you're hosting Hockey This Morning, I'm assuming it's a morning show, maybe you should be spending a little more time watching hockey games and a little less time listening to my beautiful voice. But he wrote me this long email He wrote, please, Sam, when talking about hockey, don't refer to it as the skating rink. It's a skating rink. Just because it's bigger than most skating rinks doesn't mean it's not a skating rink. Just because there's not a DJ in the middle of it doesn't mean it's not a skating rink. He said, it's just a rink or the ice because men are on there. A skating rink is for figure skating. No, it's not. It's for any ice skating. And if you're going to start liking hockey because of a line brawl, Please move on. There is so much more to the game than scraps. Fuck. I can't stand it when non-hockey people try talking about it. Most people are non-hockey people. So if you don't want non-hockey people talking about hockey, prepare for a quiet day. Then he says, and instead of talking about the fight in a game with two teams, do two minutes of research and find out that it was Calgary and Vancouver, and it was two seconds into the game. And... It's not a part of hockey that one coach has been suspended for 15 days and the other fined for $25,000. For anyone wanting to hear more extensive hockey talk, and then he talks about his show, Hockey This Morning, on NHL Radio. Look, I'm assuming that if anybody wants hockey talk, they're not listening to the Opie and Anthony pre-show in the morning. Because I think there is no guys. We have not advertised this as your one-stop shop for hockey. And I, if a hockey fight ends up on my radar because Opie tweets about it, I'll talk about that. But I'm not going to research the sport so I can put it into proper context and really break it down for everybody. As far as all of us are concerned, as far as the general Opie and Anthony listening public is concerned, they saw a bunch of men on a skating rink fighting with each other on Opie's Twitter. And that's all that matters. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. You talk about that on NHL radio today. Anyway, this NHL radio. Why would you need to talk about the NHL every morning? Get out of here. You could talk about it if there's a game going on, but come on. It's about 10 minutes left before the Opie and Anthony show starts. And I'm going to tell you, the Opie and Anthony show is going to have stuff to talk about today. Because we're not limited to just hockey. No. Hockey could come up, but it probably won't. Another another sports story, though. 
it's a football story. It's not the Richard Sherman story. I'm sure that's going to come up. But I'm hoping, I'm giving uh, Opie and Anthony the clip this morning. One, There's a player from the 70s, an NFL, a 60s, 70s player. His name is uh, David Cope. And apparently, there's a documentary that came out about this guy, Jeremy Smith. And he played for the Redskins in like the 60s and 70s. And he was a closeted gay man. Well, David Cope was his teammate on the Redskins. And there's a like a one-minute segment in this documentary where David Cope talks about sleeping with him. The two teammates had a love affair. I hope Opie and Anthony get into this. Because I would well, I'd rather them talk about I'd rather them talk about uh two football players sleeping with each other than hockey. But <laughs> but I mean, you know, like you talk now about the first athletes coming out of the closet and, and and there's even conversations about well have there been gay athletes this whole time? This is in nineteen the nineteen sixties. The Redskins were sleeping with each other, for God's sake. It blew my mind when I heard this story yesterday. Uh and I'm hoping Obi and Anthony will get into it today. Eight six six wow one wow is the phone number. Eight six six nine six nine one nine six nine. Phone lines are wide open as we count down the minutes. Before Opie and Anthony start, Opie and Jim both in the studio and on his way. There is a change in the studio. I'm assuming that's going to be talked about at the top of the show. Unless they don't have any complaints. Maybe it'll just be good news. And what will happen is they won't even mention it. Like, oh, yeah, that like off the air. Oh, it's good that they changed that. And then they get on the air and don't even ever mention it. It must be impossible managing this channel. But I'm telling you. One of the changes that Opie and Anthony asked for has been made, and it's there. Um, we were talking about Ant yesterday. I, I, I called it Denture Day, and it was kind of disappointing because Ant came into the studio with his new teeth because he's getting, like, uh, laminates put on. And he, and he came in with the temporary ones. I guess you have to put temporary ones on for two weeks, and then you get the real ones. But I didn't really – I didn't notice. I don't think anybody really did. Uh, Ant had to bring it up about three hours into the show because nobody had said anything about it. Here's what it sounded like. They're molded from my teeth. They like take an impression of it, and then they do all the work where they grind down and shape your teeth and stuff like that. And then when you're done, ready to go home, they use the mold that they made when you first got there. They fill it up with some stuff. They slap it back on your fucking teeth, wait a while, and they pull the mold off, and then the impression of your teeth is left stuck to your teeth. So it's the exact replica of the teeth that you came in with, except that gray discoloration isn't there. For these, it's not caps, so they don't ground, grind your teeth down right. uh, to little points that they do when they put caps on. Right. They're using your teeth as the back, the background, and then they put veneers over right. the front. So th- she shapes the teeth, and she just bah, 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 grinds it all down until it looks really nicely shaped and do stuff. Do they feel like teeth? On your tongue? Yes. There's, yeah. Yeah, there's, it does. I mean, they looked... I, I, the dental technology is so crazy. They actually know what they're doing. They look like his teeth. Nobody could tell yesterday. I was really hoping for something humiliating, and it just didn't happen. Let's go to Eric in New Jersey with just about six minutes. Six and a half minutes before the Opie and Anthony show begins on this beautiful Thursday morning. How's it going, Eric? How are you? <laughs> So uh, I heard you say Norton's on his way in, and um, I'm also on my way into work. I just wanted to uh, let little Jimmy know that in uh, North Brunswick, New Jersey, there is some black ice. Oh, he's going to be so happy to be out of that state. He is going to be so happy that he lives in New York and doesn't have to deal with that. I still, I, I love that everybody picked up on that, and they still bring up the fact that Jim's used to call the police to find out if there was black ice on the road before he would drive to a gig. I wonder if he'd ever, I, I wish I'd asked him the question. I wonder if the police ever said, yeah, there's black ice on the road, it's cold outside, if he would cancel gigs to avoid the black ice, or if it was just like, I just wanted to have that knowledge. Chris in Oklahoma. Yeah, I just was wondering if you guys ever happen to notice that the only two teams to make it to the Super Bowl is most, it's legal to smoke weed in both of them. We did notice that, and I believe it has absolutely nothing to do with what brought them to the Super Bowl. I 
just something funny. I figured. It's not funny. Ryan in D.C. Everybody's pointed that out. Ryan in D.C. Yeah, what's up, man? Hey, uh, I wanted to know what you thought about Batista coming back on Monday Night Raw, and who do you think is going to win the Royal Rumble this Sunday? Oh, gosh. I'll try to make it quick. Uh, I don't know. I would hope that a wrestler named Daniel Bryan wins the Royal Rumble, and Batista coming back was kind of lackluster. I was hoping for more. Uh, you remember Batista. He was a wrestler about four years ago. He returned on Monday Night Raw, but he was wearing very tight pants and didn't say much, so it wasn't it wasn't as big a deal, I thought, as it should have been. The one thing I'm a little worried about today, when going through the news stories, what are Opie and Anthony going to tackle? Now, you know I've had uh, my arguments with the guys in terms of music on the show multiple times in the past, most recently uh, because they played Hall & Oates. They insisted that Hall & Oates in Asia were like the greatest bands that have ever been. And I am of the opinion that both of those bands are shit, and they're terrible. The Captain and Tennille have announced that they're divorcing. And I am petrified. As soon as I heard that last night, I thought to myself, oh no. Does this mean a Captain and Tennille break on the Obi and Anthony show today? It could. And listen, we talked about how good the guys are at what they do. If anybody can make a Captain and Tennille break funny, it's Opie and it's Anthony. Maybe it can happen, but I'm petrified at having Captain and Tennille songs stuck in my head the rest of the day. That's the worst part about these music breaks, and I think that's what gets me so frustrating, because they're always funny. Opie and Anthony know how to make, and Jim, obviously, know how to make everything funny. So anytime they bring up these old music breaks, I mean, they're even if they do them over and over again, they're saying different things while the same songs are playing. So they're always funny. My problem is, that I go home and have these terrible songs stuck in my head for the rest of the day. And there is no way that I want to go home singing Muskrat Love today. So hopefully, Captain and Tennille will be talked about briefly, and we will move on. I don't see it happening. I see a Captain and Tennille break happening today. And maybe there's some Captain and Tennille fans that are just waiting for that. I hope I don't get any angry emails from the host of Captain and Tennille this morning on Captain and Tennille Radio saying... Why didn't you know more about the captain? Mm. Also, today on the Opie and Anthony show, Jay Leno is going to be on 60 Minutes on Sunday, and they released a clip of Jay talking about Jimmy Fallon hosting The Tonight Show. Obviously, Jimmy Fallon is taking over for Jay in a couple weeks after the Olympics. And Jay, I'm telling you, this guy is unshakable. He's, of course, being uh, polite about it. You know what I mean? He's not, he's, he wasn't taking any shots. He was saying, oh, and we'll talk about it. And, and I'm interested to hear if Opie and Anthony think that Jay Leno is just once again kind of being diplomatic or if he's sincere and he doesn't have any harboring resentments about this decision. I will say this. If you listen to the clip, and I believe today on the Opie and Anthony show, we will. I believe there are some veiled insults toward Conan O'Brien. But just the way Jay's talking about The Tonight Show and the transition of hosts and he's complimenting Jimmy Fallon, I believe there are some veiled shots at Conan O'Brien. You can be the judge. We're here if Opie and Anthony are the judge in just about a minute and a half uh, when the Opie and Anthony show begins for today. Let me go to Ronnie in Brooklyn. What's up, buddy? You there? No, I'm not going to Ronnie in Brooklyn. I don't have time to wait around. The Opie and Anthony show starts in just about one minute. Now, as I said, the thing for you to look forward to is the fact that something in the studio has changed. Yes, physically. It's not a little thing either. It's something that's been specifically asked for. I'm assuming that's what they'll start with because it's a big deal. Something actually got done. And I think that says a lot of good about the new management here. Because something got done. One thing got done. Which is right now 100% more than anything in the last three years. So that's, that's a big congratulations. And I will also say this. Listen very closely when the intro to the Opie and Anthony show plays. This is the new intro that was supposed to play yesterday, right? Okay. Supposed to play yesterday, but somebody was sleeping behind the wheel. Today. Wait, well, you know who. Today, when the new intro 
play. Who do you think? Yeah. When the new intro plays, listen very closely. Because a change that was asked by you, the fans, Opie, Jim, everybody, Anthony, has been made to the intro. It's about to play. Because the Opie and Anthony show starts right now. 